welcome, ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, faculty, staff, and oh yes, the seniors to the graduation ceremonies of Edmund Burke's class of 2018. My name is Mustafa Mizrani, and I've had the privilege of serving as Burke's 12th grade dean this year. We're here to celebrate an important milestone in the lives of 53 very special young people, so close to the hearts of the many who have come to mark this occasion with them today. Now seniors, I know that at times the journey through high school has been difficult, sometimes tedious, occasionally stressful. <laughs> but it's time to put those thoughts aside. Because today you can take pride in the fact that all of this is in the past. And now you can all finally get to work on those bright, exciting futures you've been preparing for for the past four years. But before we do, let me tell everyone about what we're in store for today. We have six student speakers, and we have three student performances. We will also hear from our head of school, Damian Jones, and our keynote speaker, Maureen Manon. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first student speaker, uh, performers.
it probably wouldn't be me. <laughs> I'm really just speaking today because I volunteered to. <laughs> While preparing this speech, I felt a lot of pressure, mostly because, if some of you will recall, I gave a speech at the 8th grade moving up ceremony that was quite successful, and now I feel like I have a reputation to keep up. <laughs> just like in 8th grade, I am really just speaking today because I chose to. Not because I necessarily have anything profound to say. <laughs> One of the great things about Burke is that we're given so many opportunities to pursue things we are passionate about, such as public speaking, and we don't even have to be the valedictorian, or the star athlete, or the super talented artist, musician, or actor, although we have a lot of people in those last three categories. While I could probably stand up here and give almost the same speech I did in eighth grade, because most of it would still apply, I'll change it up a bit. <laughs> These past four years have shaped me in ways I could not have even imagined back in eighth grade. I've made an array of friends from so many different aspects of my life, whether it be school, sports, or summer camp, and every one of these people have impacted who I am, who I am as a person in such unique and meaningful ways. I've had the opportunity to try a number of sports and blossom into a very successful athlete, something I didn't necessarily foresee myself becoming back in middle school. I've discovered my passion for science, more specifically biology, as I ended up taking a total of six science classes throughout high school. I found my passion for service on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, a place I will be returning for the third time this summer on the Burke service trip. All of that said, I'm not up here to keep talking about myself. I feel that everyone in our grade has grown so much over these past four years, and it's been so fun to watch all of my classmates discover their own passions. I'm not saying we didn't encounter any setbacks or make some mistakes along the way, because we certainly did. The next part of my speech has been censored out, so I will skip to the part where I talk about how great our future is. As many of you know, I'm a huge optimist. I also, in all seriousness, enjoy inspirational quotes a lot. As I was Googling good quotes to put in my graduation speech, I came across one by Alan Alda that really resonated with me. Don't ever aim doubt at yourself. Laugh at yourself, but don't doubt yourself. I think that if we all take this advice, I have no doubt that everyone will do amazing things in college and beyond. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, when given the chance to sink or swim, not at Founders Day, but in life, <laughs> I know that all of us will swim. Thank you. I was really scared I was gonna trip on those stairs. I came to Burke as a sixth grader in a new city with no friends, and I was terrified. I was scared I wouldn't make friends, scared I wouldn't fit in, scared that I would fail. I'm having these same thoughts all the way to college, but that doesn't really matter right now. <laughs> when I first walked through the classroom, I was greeted by my new teacher, Sean Felix. He was so incredibly nice and welcoming that I immediately forgot uh, um, all my problems. His presence and understanding allowed me to breathe and actually enjoy the day I, was, I had been dreading for all the summer. <laughs> and that is one of the many examples of what makes Burke great, the people. I've had my ups and downs with Burke, like I'm sure all my class has had, but what always brought me back were my teachers and my classmates. They supported me in ways that I didn't, that I didn't even know possible. My teachers pushed me when I really needed to get off that couch, and they understood when I really needed that extension. <laughs> What's different about Burke, however, is how long you can have the same teacher. For example, in seventh grade, Morgan Menard taught me Af African studies, where she really hammered home the point, Africa is not a country. <laughs> <laughs> and now we just missed APR history as a senior. It's kind of crazy to think how long some of my teachers, teachers have been involved in my life, but that's what makes it great. They have had the time to know me as a person, to study my work habits, and to joke like old friends. Also, the fact that we call our teachers by, our, by their first name, which really freaks out some of my family members. <laughs> <laughs> but, to wrap up, without sounding like propaganda for Burke, I just wanted to say I love my time here. The people that surrounded me shaped me to become better than I would have ever hoped. To my teachers, thank you for being there and just being you. And to my classmates, I'll see you at reunion. Hello. Graduates, teachers, family members and friends, 
It is an honor to be here with you today as we celebrate my fellow class of 2018 and their accomplishments. Parents, you are probably wondering where all the years have gone and how the young adults who stand before you, ready to take on the world, have taken the places of your babies. Of course, for us students, on the other hand, those years probably felt like an eternity that was never going to come to an end. <laughs> At least I know that's how I felt. When we first came to this school, we were skeptical, as all new students are. Whether you came as a 6th grader or whether you came in 10th grade like I did, all of us had been pulled out of our comfort zones and pushed into a brand new environment with new rules, new teachers, new classmates, and a billion obstacles ahead of us. Some of us learned pretty quickly that things were going to be different and adapted to the environment, while others, like me, were stubborn and quite sure they could change the environment to fit them. <laughs> However, over time, we all learned to find a balance and came together as a community. Today has a different meaning to us all. For some, they just can't wait to burst through those doors and onto whatever is next. But for others, this is a moment of nostalgia as they think back to the memories that have been made on the way here. Though one thing is the same for us all. We've struggled, come to bumps in the road, fallen down in games, failed tests, done something really stupid, made friends, and also parted with them. And yet we persevered through it all just to stand here today. I think that alone is an achievement. It shows the strength of each one of my classmates and even all the parents, teachers, and friends who helped, us, helped them get through it. Now, while it is important for us to recognize this accomplishment, it is just as important for us to realize that high school graduation is not an end point in our life, but actually only the beginning. Life is a journey, and all accomplishments we achieve during our time on Earth um, should be taken as a starting point for our next goal. I have no doubt that my fellow classmates will go on to surpass every goal they put in front of themselves, because that's just who they are. They're strong, independent, smart people who are ready to change this world for the better. Lastly, I want to take a minute to truly thank everyone here for supporting us. I know at times we may have driven you crazy, parents, or flooded your office with chatter, Mustafa, Alexis, and Maureen. <laughs> but even after all that, you stood by us through thick and thin, ready to help us wherever we needed it. That kind of teamwork and guidance is what everyone needs in life, and you never fail to provide it for us. So thank you for being such amazingly kind and generous people. So now, Class of 2018, as Neil Gaiman said, it's time for us to go and make interesting mistakes, make amazing mistakes, make glorious and fantastic mistakes, break all the rules, and leave the world a more interesting place for us being here. And it's time for us to make it legendary. Thank you. So a little fun fact is that around five years ago, um, not today, but during this time, we sang this same song at our eighth grade moving up ceremony. And we promised that we would sing it during our senior graduation. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a boy who works at Starbucks. <laughs>
actually, I want to pause before I, I read my remarks because as I've shared with this class, this is my first graduating class. Um, these are students who I've because uh, as I shared with them uh, when we were uh, back in the room preparing, I'm a little nervous, you know. Um, and I'm nervous because this is the last point that I'll have uh, all of you together. And um, as I share during an assembly, uh, this is probably uh, a moment that I won't forget because we've been growing up together. And so I'm grateful that you're all here uh, and that you hung in there with me as I was figuring out this job. Um, but that you've made it this far. And so congratulations on getting here. This is a special moment for me. So welcome parents, family, friends, faculty, staff, alumni, and trustees to Evan Burke School's commencement ceremony for the class of 2018. I want to thank you for being here today to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. And I want to thank you for all the support that you have provided our students over the years and guiding them toward graduation. Your dedication to the lives of your children has been integral to their success. And your commitment to Burke has enabled us to foster a learning environment informed by our mission to consciously bring together students who represent a diverse group to actively and to actively foster their growth and development as independent thinkers. Throughout the course of, throughout the course of their study and life experience at Burke, today's graduates have gained great knowledge, valuable skills and abilities, as well as a sense of responsibility and commitment to justice that will enable them to make positive contributions to the world in which we live. At Burke, we remain committed to maintaining a unique school community that believes its students should be diverse in ethnicity, family structure, race, gender identity, political perspective, religion, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. This diversity is and will continue to be our schools and our students' greatest strength. The heterogeneity of our community expands the lived experiences of our students, and it increases their capacity to more nimbly and critically engage a world that is becoming more increasingly diverse. Given all that our graduates have gained from Burke, their experiences would not be possible without the care of our talented faculty and staff. I'm grateful for their faithful and steadfast commitment to ensuring that every student in the school is well known and feels meaningfully supported and included in the life of the school. So at this time, I'd like to ask our graduates to stand to applaud our faculty and staff for all they've done. Thank you, graduates. I also want to thank the parents of the graduating class of 2018. Your love and care for your children has brought them to this point in their lives and the school will be forever grateful for the gift that you have given us in being your partners in the work of raising your children into the young adults that we see before us today. So at this time, I'd like to ask our graduates to stand again to turn with their parents. mission and culture through your leadership and maintaining an environment that has been welcoming, kind, respectful, inclusive, equitable, and supportive of all community members. Throughout the years, you have encouraged others to strive toward excellence through your consistent demonstration of your impressive intellectual strengths, your exciting creative talents, and notable athletic abilities. It is clear to me that you are imaginative, curious, thoughtful, collaborative, courageous, active, and responsible and that you are also ready to formulate the vital questions of your time, discover essential answers, and arrive at your own informed judgments as individuals eager to actively engage in the world. Class of 2018, please continue to be your authentic selves. You are your best and at your best when you do this. And please continue to welcome others to do the same by encouraging differences of opinions, ideas, interests, expressions, and identities. And I also encourage you, particularly given the times that we're living in, to courageously declare the worth of others and to stand firm in challenging behaviors that demean, marginalize, and exclude people, and above all else, do the just and do the right thing. As you enter 
picture life beyond high school, I'm reminded of words written by our school's namesake, Evan Burke, who wrote, never despair, but if you do, work on in despair. And he wrote, no one can make a greater mistake than he or she who did nothing because he or she could do only a little. These words will resonate with you over time because you will learn that life is hard and that challenges will often present themselves. And despite how difficult a moment may be, and despite the despair you will inevitably encounter, you have to fully embrace life and the struggles to be faced along the way, and you have to and you must press on in the face of it all. You also have to believe, even when you think you have little to give, that your actions, no matter how small, have the, have the power to affect change. And you shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that because you can only do a little, then nothing should be done at all. Instead, you have to maintain ongoing faith and remain steadfast in your ability to make a difference in the world. It is also incredibly important to remember that life is a team sport and that no one gets ahead on their own and that no one is capable of greatness without help, support, mentorship, and encouragement from others. Your ability to exercise flexibility, creativity, openness, collaboration, and conflict resolution are essential for keeping up in this 21st century. Furthermore, your success in this global world is going to be as much determined by your ability to work with others as it is by your intellectual capabilities. So to be clear, your ability to achieve any level of success is highly dependent upon your capacity to effectively engage those around you in the world and in the work that you'll be doing throughout the rest of your life. So continue to be good friends. Continue to be trustworthy partners and dependable colleagues. And above all else, treat one another and the people in your lives with respect and kindness and remain committed to the equitable, inclusive, and just. Class of 2018, I stand here in admiration of each and every one of you, and I'm joined by so many in recognition of you today for all that you have done for Burke, and all that you will do in the exciting and robust futures that lie ahead of you in the wider world. I wish you all the very best on this day. Congratulations, Class of 2018.
had the incredible opportunity to accompany my father on a work trip to Europe. Ironically, over the five days that I was halfway across the world, I've never felt so connected to my classmates or to Burke. At the end of the 19th century to the beginning of the 20th century, during the period known as the Belle Epoque, which is French for the beautiful, the beautiful era, artists gathered in the outlandish, impoverished, hilltop Parisian neighborhood of Montmartre to create works that experimented with art in unprecedented, transcendent, and awe-inspiring ways that eventually define our notions of what art is and what it can be. While well, Edmund Burke is nowhere near as interesting of a name as Montmartre, as I strolled through the winding Parisian streets in my impeccable, awe-inspiring croc sandals, I realized, I realized that the reasons that drew Picasso, Matisse, and Toulouse-Lautrec to Montmartre are the same reasons that we were drawn to Burke. Picasso once wrote about Montmartre that, quote, there we were truly happy. We were considered as painters and not as curious animals. Artists were attracted to Montmartre because it was a place for them to be exactly who they wanted to be. There, they were free to paint as many prostitutes as they wanted, <laughs> in as many colors as they wanted, and in as many shapes as they wanted. But most importantly, it was a place for artists to be surrounded by other artists with whom they laughed, disagreed, and cried. As my seventh year at Burke draws to a close, I can't think of a place more parallel to Montmartre than Burke. Like Lamar, Burke has given us the freedom to just exist and enjoy the joys of existing. While the artists gathered and danced over pianos, we gathered and danced our hearts out to the YMCA song at the end of lunch. <laughs> Especially Billy, though. <laughs> While artists left Montmartre for commissions or inspirational trips, we found our inspiration getting lost on the subway during our New York trip or accidentally leaving people behind in metro stations on field trips. <laughs> While the artists celebrated selling paintings together, we stormed the field gym after a Burke Varsity Boys basketball team beat field. <laughs> While the artists expressed their love for one another by featuring each other in their paintings or sketches, we express our love for one another during assembly sing-alongs to You've Got a Friend in Me. While the artists braved poverty and illness to create their art, we braved bedbugs and, and, and inedible foods on bonding trips. <laughs> Unfortunately, the YMCA song doesn't last forever, and neither did the artists stay in Montmartre. Picasso left one mark because he still had blue periods, rose periods, and guernicas to create. The same thing that many of us will do this autumn when we pack up our things and depart. Although he left, he never thought, he never forgot the eclectic, bizarre, and undeniably special nature of Monmar. He later reflected that, quote, we will all go back. In fact, we were never so happy as there. While we may never all physically converge upon Burke again together, it is my hope that like the that like Picasso, we will never forget this place that allowed us to be painters and maybe sometimes curious animals too. To the class of 2018, a well-deserved congratulations, and to the place that cultivated ours and my own passions, smiles, hugs, friendships, and sing-alongs for the past seven years of my life. Thank you, and keep on rocking in the free world! <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, my name's Emily and I've been at Burke since the sixth grade, making this year my seventh year here. I'm a lifer, but looking back, it isn't how long I've been here that's made me a lifer. It's you. It's all of you. <laughs> there are people here today I've known since that very first day of sixth grade. There are also people here I've known since I was three years old. And there are people I've known for only a few years. And the most amazing thing is, I feel just as close to the friends I've had for a short while as I do to the people I've known for my entire life. Because that's what Burke has done for me. I remember hearing all throughout my time here at Burke that Burke is a community and not just a school. And part of me rolled my eyes because I come from an elementary school that made us, all of us refer to each other as friends all the time. <laughs> and that it never really felt right to me because I wasn't friends with all those kids. <laughs> So when I heard Burke is a community, I was suspicious. I wondered if maybe those words were just words. And I probably kept thinking like that until the end of freshman year. I think everybody can relate when I say freshman year is decidedly not the best year of high school. 
<laughs> whether you were at Burke or not. It's awkward, and you don't really have a hang of high school yet, and you feel a little bit lost for most of it. And it was like that for me. And I stayed suspicious of Burke as more than a school. But near the end of my freshman year, when I had more of a handle on how the whole high school thing worked, I stumbled onto the best thing that has happened to me at Burke. By some miracle, I made friends with a small group of people. And that small group of people has probably tripled in size since that year. Don't get me wrong, I know we're not all friends. We're teenagers, we don't all have to like each other that much. Uh, <laughs> but as the years went by, and my circle of people I considered to be friends grew, I started to understand and believe more and more what I'd been so suspicious of when I first came here. I started to see Burke as a community and not just a school. Now that our time at Burke has come to an end, I took a moment to look back on my time here, and I can honestly say that this year has been the best out of all seven. And it's not just because I'm excited to start college in August, it's because no other year have I felt so connected to all of you. I have made friends this year with people I didn't know until the winter. I connected with people I never thought I would. And I have felt connected to every person in our school, as cheesy as that might sound. I have been shaped by it, challenged by it, and have been incredibly lucky to have been a part of this community. And it's with a surprisingly light heart that I am ready to go. That's because I know that this sense of connection to so many people, to all of you here, will not go away. In my seven years here, I've learned how to build a community of my own and how to be part of one. And I am excited to go because I am ready for all of the relationships I've built here to continue. I'm ready for the future because everything that I learned in my time here will always be part of my future. Congratulations 2018, congratulations to us. We did it. Uh, good afternoon, friends, family, and graduates of the class of 2018. I could never fully articulate just how weird it feels to hear that come out of my mouth. <laughs> if, in fifth grade, you had told me that my, if you had told my parents or me that I would be a speaker at my high school graduation, that would have been an absolutely laughable thing. I was a quiet kid with a penchant for math and reading, occasionally bullied at my local elementary middle school campus. But I wanted to stay. I was afraid that the move to a different school would result in the loss of the few close friends I had. But my parents forced the issue, and I enrolled at Burke in the sixth grade. Although I fought it tooth and nail at first, uh, I eventually came to realize that Burke was the perfect place for me. Today, I'd like to tell you all why. I could go on for hours, and I have, about the Burke culture. How teachers and students respect each other in a way I've never seen at any other school, and how Burke traditions like Founders Day and the eighth grade amazing race for incoming students build communities within grades and between them. But recently, I had a realization about the true greatest gift that Burke has given to me and to all of us. I and we go into the world, I believe, fully prepared for life. Now, I understand that that's an absolutely unprovable blanket statement, but I do truly believe it. I don't believe, as some high school graduates do, that I know everything I will ever need to know in the world. Rather, I have been sufficiently educated that I know that I know nothing, and I go into the world ready and excited to learn more. I know that much of what I have in life was handed to me at birth, and rather than be content with what I've been given, I will work to earn it. Burke's emphasis of activism and social justice has imbued in me what I believe to be my most important value, the obligation and dedication to using what I have to help those who have less or cannot fight for themselves. I know that Burke has imbued this value in my classmates as well, coupled with the values and skills of critical thinking, logical analysis, and generosity. I know that the Edmund Burke School Class of 2018 has the ability to be the group of young adu adults that will go out and change the world the most. Proportionately to numbers, of course. <laughs> so, classmates, just keep what you've learned at Burke in mind and you'll be fine. Remember the moments of panic hours before an A-push exam and remember the jovial arguments about Burke football and remember the feeling of today <laughs> because we made it. Now it's time for us all to go out into the world and make it a better place because remember one more thing. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good people do nothing. And Burke has made us the best people. Go and promote the defeat of evil. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, graduating seniors, family, friends, fellow faculty, and the Burke community. When I was asked by the class of 2018 to speak at their graduation, two separate but simultaneous feelings overwhelmed me. The first feeling 
with a tremendous amount of humble love and gratitude for the sweet gesture of the senior class. But just when my eyes almost ran over tears, the second feeling jumped in. I had the grave suspicion that they were pranking me. <laughs> <laughs> you see, most of my students know I'm terrified of public speaking. <laughs> So, as a teacher, this might surprise you, but in the classroom, I've developed a persona that helps me manage my fear, <laughs> as well as the nifty fact that progressive education places the student at the center and me in the periphery of the classroom. <laughs> so what happens when I can speak publicly? My splotchy Irish skin turns eight shades of pink, <laughs> and while my palms sweat, my ears rush with the sound of hookah sized wave tumbling toward me. Uh, time rushes fast and slow until I'm dizzy with confusion. My stomach leaps to my throat and my, an internal dialogue inside of me says that I am not making sense. <laughs> <laughs> so the fear can be so paralyzing that I, I do my best to avoid speaking at assembly or parent presentations and absolutely avoid sitting on panels at conferences. To say the least, I have a very severe, severe problem with stage fright. So when the senior class asked me to speak last winter, I did what every reasonable, independent, strong, and successful 39-year-old adult does when they ponder life's challenges. I called my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she wisely said, Maureen, they see it, you have no choice. If your students asked you to speak, isn't that what Burke is all about? <laughs> and so now, clearly, I have to add my mother to the list of people pranking me today. <laughs> Fear can be a complex emotion. Fear is both protective and catastrophic. Fear is, prevents us from harm and from success. When we are young, fear can provide an internal drive to remain within sensible boundaries. Fear of new food keeps us from poisonous berries. Fear of strangers keeps us safe from possible malintent. Fear of snakes and spiders seems pretty reasonable considering the potential harm. As we age, we learn the rules of safety and nature in life, and our fears turn inward. We fear failure. Fear manifests itself from insecurity. As I aged, I realized that whenever I feared a professional or personal challenge, whenever my stomach rose to my throat, I thought to myself, I can't be successful. I learned to stop everything and use a mantra, challenge the fear. This correction of my instincts led me to great job interviews, in grad school to finish marathons and even to create my family. Instead of running from it, I rose to the challenge, even when stage fright reared its ugly head. When applying to graduate school for my master's in history, I learned I'd have to pass an oral exam, which involved studying 25 tomes of American history, and then being questioned by three professors who happened to be expert on those books. Talk about stage fright. When we started the process of adoption, I worried the authorities would see me as an unfit mother. I was afraid of being publicly evaluated and risking not being able to complete my family. When fear is rooted in insecurity, it's essential we face these doubts. So here I am, standing on a stage with hundreds of people staring around at me, challenging the thing I fear. And I think I'm so grateful for this opportunity. We'll see. Um, seniors, as you face your future, I'm certain you have fears. Fears of new living situations, new schools, intimidating step next steps towards your adult life, and even fear of leaving our quirky and warm her community. If you aren't afraid now, surely you will have a moment in college or early adulthood when you will feel fear of failure or change. These fears are natural. We are human. Routine feels safe and change feels scary. But it is time to harness your emotions and the tools you have developed. And seniors would have been by an experience in collecting tools to conquer your fears in the next stage of your life. 2018, I have known many of you at various steps in your journey at Berk. At each stage, you've developed the talents and abilities that have prepared you to face your futures. As seventh graders, you had such an intense energy in the classroom that there was a frenzy disorder to our time together. I don't think there was a day that I didn't walk out of a world geography classroom in complete exhaustion with a pounding headache. 
In fact, the energy was so intense that I had to let Monica know I just didn't think I had the endurance for middle school anymore. <laughs> that spring 2018, your collective energy had me retire from middle school. <laughs> What I should have understood from that experience is that your energy would develop into passion and drive. Your goofiness beget creativity. Your constant questions would become academic curiosity. You would learn to harness that middle school excitement to generate innovative solutions to future challenges. As ninth and 10th grade students, you rolled in with new members that complemented your enthusiasm. Chandler focused Paige. Dylan challenged Jamie and Carly. Parker Milliken pushed Sophia to new realms of obscure thinking. <laughs> I, I think Julia sprinkled pixie dust on Emily, and Aaron and Key definitely let us in on CEO's pop music side. Uh. Taylor choreographed the rest of you into a dramatic dance. Uh. All of you contributed a unique flavor to the class. While you reassembled as a group, and might have experienced the natural growing pains of ninth and tenth grades, you build relationships. And this is a key moment to consider. As you became friends and reassessed your assumptions about each other, you built a bond. One that you utilized over and over in meeting new challenges. Your pride of the class of 2018 is so intense that reverberations of your chant still echo the atrium. 2018. <laughs> Don't underestimate that bond because relationships are the foundation to tackling your fears. Leaning on my parents, my husband, and my friends bolstered me to challenge myself. Often they can see me more clearly. As many of you seniors know, I'm lucky to teach with my best friend, Elizabeth Sislin, beloved English teacher. You took a particular interest in our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to detect shade, debates between, uh, picking debates between us, and even interviewing us on text chats about our friendship. <laughs> um, but our friendship isn't built on texting. Snapchat streaks or Finsta account, it is built on honesty. When I am vulnerable or I'm obnoxious, Elizabeth can recenter me and offer me sound advice. She has even been with me through the ups and downs last. She has been with me through the ups and downs last 12 years, and she can often see me more clearly than I can see myself. Elizabeth is eloquently frank when I'm backing away from a challenge because I'm scared. This is good news. It means you can, that although we navigate the challenges ahead of us on our own, we get to phone a friend. It is okay to be honest and ask for help. When you move on from birth into your next stage of life, reach out to 2018 because they know you, they see you clearly. No need to posture about perfection, they know about your awkward ninth grade SIS photo. <laughs> they endlessly argue with you about the merit of third party presidential elections. <laughs> they laugh with you when you shook an entire New York subway car with noise in an effort to get your junior advisors to cry with laughter. They commiserated with you when you failed the test probably one of Bob's or mine. They hugged, they hugged you when you made a critical error in that basketball game and completely lost it when you won the softball banner three times. Not, not bad, Bengals. Take down Instagram filters and look each other in the eye. Bounce ideas off each other. You didn't work so hard at becoming 2018 for nothing. At Burke, you can be yourself and we love you for that, works and all. Use the relationships, there's the support system to conquer your fears. This is an essential life tool. In 11th grade, I had the honor of being your grade dean. When we started our time together, I had a very frank conversation with you. I believe with all my heart that many of you have misbranded yourselves to avoid rising to a challenge. We established a standard for performance and behavior, and you understood I would not settle for less. In many ways, Junior year offers new challenges and expectations. Your teachers expect you to be self-advocates, to articulate your strengths and weaknesses, and work through them to meet the demanding workload. And I can happily say that all of you rose to that challenge. <laughs> you found new ways to advocate for yourself, you participated in classes with a new sense of seriousness and purpose. Many of you took new academic risks, sometimes failing, and sometimes achieving your goal. You learned that you could bounce back from challenges. You found resilience and fortitude. 
And most importantly, you did it with a charming sense of humor and creativity. I'm not sure I have laughed as hard or as much as I have laughed at the class of 2018. <laughs> Finally, as 12th graders, I witnessed many of you fold together all of these talents, from your creativity and enthusiasm, to your communication and self-advocacy, to develop into young adults ready to move into the world. You have already conquered anxiety-inducing feats. From showing artwork at a gallery in Georgetown, to performing podcasts, or being interviewed on NPR, the class of 2018 has already checked items off the list of most Americans would find terrifying. In our school, you challenged the administration and helped sculpt instrumental changes to dress code policy to improve the relationships between students and faculty. Woo! You created new quirky events like Burchella, where cutting hair to music became entertainment. <laughs> But more importantly, you raised $900 for financial aid. You used creativity, collaboration, hard work, and organization to reach your goal. You won chess championships and started countless plays. You, you completed over 1,600 hours of community service. You were accepted to over 150 universities and colleges. You have attended countless protests and walkouts. So, so many walkouts. <laughs> In each of these moments, you build the skills necessary to challenge your fears and create a better future. You also have learned to channel your energy, intellect, and individuality to fight against injustice and teach the generations above you about their follies. In fact, your creative individualism coupled with the robust love of challenging authority makes the perfect storm for you to tackle all the challenges headed your way. So how do all these experiences relate to fear? Because when the dread rises up, it makes you doubt yourself, makes you want to run or hide or fight like a completely out of control warrior, slow down a bit. Realize that you've built a solid foundation. And be frank. And to be frank, we need you to fight the challenges that others have been afraid to tackle. We need future leaders who can put aside personal concerns about what people might think of them, to stand up for what is right, I worry that our current climate is so rich with fear, many aren't sure where to turn. No matter the side, your side of the political aisle, America's afraid. However, fear isn't new to us. Americans have previously pushed through periods of fear. Our history is filled with Americans who are afraid of diversity, diplomatic challenges that seem insurmountable, or economic crises that seem impossible to solve. But as much as atrocity and injustice is part of our history, so are strong Americans who challenge the status quo and push for civil rights and legal reform. However, when we remember our history, we don't highlight the fears of our heroes. We tend to celebrate their successes. It's important that we pause and acknowledge that to overcome injustice or national crisis, people need to take dramatic actions, which can be scary. Harriet Jacobs, you guys remember whose autobiography you read last year in English class? Hid from her slave master in an attic space for seven years. Certainly she felt fear of hiding in that attic, peering out a small hole, watching her children play, and not being able to ensure their safety, or even hold them. She was also probably scared when she fled bounty hunters, searching for her in New York and Boston. However, Harriet Jacobs did not let those fears stop her, but she conquered them and was empowered to write one of the most widely read slave narratives of her time. And her stories about human rights violations helped the abolitionist movement expand. When Alice Paul protested for women's suffrage in front of the White House, President Wilson had her jailed, where she organized a mass hunger strike. Our own government forced fed her and tortured her. When they tried to diagnose her as clinically insane to render her voiceless, I know she was terrified. Instead, she found a way to notify the public about the torture, and we can thank her for the 19th Amendment. These two Americans quilted their fears into armor, which has been interpreted by the rest of us as bravery. So 2018, I challenge you to follow their lead. Be a risk taker and a community builder. Channel your energy and creative ideas. Lean on each other and encourage your friends. Embrace your individuality and never, ever compromise your morals. Move through your next four years practicing challenges, standing up for what is right, being creative in your solutions, 
developing relationships and communication skills, and utilizing your boundless energy to keep trying. At Burke, you gathered all the tools necessary to confront your fears about the next stage of life. I urge you to use those tools to be radical agents for positive change. Americans need the class of 2018 to conquer their fears and change the world around us. You are uniquely positioned with experience necessary to achieve these goals. We, the Burke community, know you are ready to confront the obstacles ahead of you. It is up to you to take the next step. You now must challenge your fear. Congratulations, the class of 2018. You've got this. Graduates, here's the part I've been waiting for all year. As a 12th grade dean, I have the privilege of getting the last word on your high school career. I couldn't have wanted it any other way. You're a wonderful group of young people. And as selfishly as all of us may want to keep you around, we don't have space in our quirky little school for you anymore. But we do know, as every adult who's come up and spoken today, seem to come up with it on their own without talking to one another, the world is going to be such a better place with you in it rather than you out of it. We're going to miss all of you. Now, please rise. We've been using the quote from Oscar Wilde. One last time, guys. Everything in moderation, including moderation. But today isn't about moderation. Today is about celebration. Today's graduation. Please turn around. Face the audience. Move your tassel from the right to the left. Thank you.